Have you always wanted to get into game development, but whenever you Google how to code, how to make a game, you're greeted with search results upon search results of games that are maybe not so much your style. Maybe first person shooters or dungeon crawlers or violent games that are definitely towards a target demographic that is not your target demographic. If you're someone who likes cozy games, wholesome games, or games that are a bit more feminine or a little bit lighthearted. Um, I'm totally, I've been in the same boat as you. I've been always super into video games, but not for the same reasons as maybe the mass majority. I love games for the narrative, for the wholesome feeling that you get while playing them. Um, personally, I really like games where killing is just not the main objective. So there's totally an avenue for that. With the boom of cozy games back during the COVID times, with Animal Crossing, with Stardew Valley, with this whole niche existing, there are more resources than ever before for people who like these types of games to get into game development and make games that they're actually passionate about playing. So a little bit about our backstory. My name is Helena and I founded an all-female studio of four women and we're developing a cozy baking game called Madame Fifi's Bakery. You might have seen us on TikTok. We ask for suggestions for different pastries and customers that you guys would like to see in our game. I'm gonna get into it in the video, but in our team we have everyone who has a different specialty and some of us have some of the same specialties, but we all work together as a great team. But just before we begin the video, if you yourself are an artist or someone that really likes to draw and wants to give a shot at it, we're gonna be having an event next Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST where we look at all of the character design for customers that you guys drew that you think would be a good addition to our bakery. For inspiration, here are the customers that we have designed so far and that are confirmed for the public that will be in our game. And if you guys come up with any ideas, um, please either post it on TikTok or Instagram and tag us and put the hashtag MFB customer. And we'll be taking a look at those on the live stream next Tuesday. Without further ado, let's get into how to get into cozy game development. Before you start your amazing journey getting into game development, you're gonna to wanna to define what kind of aspects of game design really call to you. Of course you can be a generalist and like all of the different aspects of game design, but what I think tends to happen and usually happens is that people get into game design because they're really into art, but they want to see their art come to life. Or they're really into programming and they want to see how they can program some art. Or they're into music and they want to make music for something that has a story. Or they like writing stories but they want a way to make it interactable. There's so many parts of game design and that's why I think, personally, totally unbiased opinion. I think that game design is the amalgamation of all of the art forms meeting at one place and thus it is the pinnacle of art. I don't think many people would agree with me but <laughs> I mean you see what I mean like it has art, it has sound designers, it has programmers which are tech, completely different. It has um, storyboard artists, it has like all of 3D artists or 2D. There are so many different aspects of game design which I think make it the best form the most interactive, of course, but I find the like, most authentic form of storytelling. You know, like you literally can immerse yourself in a story and take your own adventures and actions in it. So anyways, that was a tangent. What I'm trying to get at is you should decide, I'm sure you already have an idea, but what is it from the game development um, sphere that makes you want to be a part of that? If you could only choose one, decide that. Decide that that's gonna be your strong suit. Of course you could become a generalist later and get more skills, but I find it's really good to laser focus on one aspect. So I'm gonna be talking about um, game development as a whole and in the video like little parts are gonna to tailor to like specifically programmers specifically artists but game development isn't just one thing it's so many things and that's what makes it so beautiful. Okay, so now that we've addressed what part of game development you want to get into, let's talk about what kind of games you want to make. I would say that you should start thinking about what kind of games you want to make based on what games you enjoy playing the most because, of course, making a game is not the same as playing a game, but if you play a game that you really, really enjoy, often like you play the same types of games and you're going to be familiar with the tropes, you're going to be familiar with the gameplay styles, and you're just going to have a better knowledge base and a better foundation on the game mechanics to implement in that game or the art style or the music or whatever. So what I would recommend is depending on the type of game that you want to make, look at the engines that are typically used to make that type of game. 
For example, if you're someone that really likes to make, for example, first person shooters, you're going to be using something like Unreal Engine or Unity. Whereas if you're someone that really enjoys visual novels, you're going to be looking probably at RenPy. If you like 2D games, maybe you could look at RPG Maker or you could look at Godot. If you like 3D games, it's again going to be Unity Unreal. So depending on the type of game that you want to create, the different resources available to you are going to be different. Specifically for wholesome games and cozy games, I would recommend Unity because it's probably the platform that has the most resources and learning tools available. There is There was a huge controversy with Unity um, and their monetization of games, but that's more so, I don't know if you've seen that even, but that's more so for games that are really like making a lot of money. If you're just learning how to program, you're just learning how to make games, doing it for game gems and whatever, which I'll talk about later, I recommend Unity as a great starting point. Still on the topic of Unity, let's talk about some resources to get into learning about the different aspects of game design and game development. Unity has a lot of resources, not only just for programmers, but also for artists and I think musicians and other things like that. So there's this platform called Unity Learn, which is completely free and which is how I actually made my very first game. I made a simulator, car simulator, where you just drove down a road and I was so proud and I finally like learned how to make my very first game. You know, game is a very loose term here. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's so many free resources available on the internet to get into learning game design that there's really no need to you know, there's no excuse um, or need to like say you have to pay so much for a course because anything you could learn in a course, if you're smart enough, you can learn by yourself on the internet. I've, I mean, we're in the age of the internet. Everything is available online. So Unity Learn is a really great one, especially for brand new beginners. And they have a bunch of different programs on there. So if you're into specific different types of games, then they have like for different, like they have for dungeon crawlers, for example, or for first person shooters or for whatever. They have all those types of games. Um, if you're into wholesome games and coding, uh, coding cozy games specifically, I would look um, a lot at YouTube tutorials. There's a lot of really great creators um, available that give great tutorials. Brackies is one. A lot of just coding tutorials in general and art tutorials are all available for free, totally for free on YouTube. A way that I learned to code personally that was really like kind of unconventional, I think now it's a bit more common, but using ChatGPT as a learning resource. So like asking ChatGPT, okay, code this, um, code a script that makes a character move up, down, right, and left, and it'll code that, and it'll add comments for you so you can read those comments. A lot of the times it'll do things that are really strange and really funky, but you can kind of use it as, as a tool sometimes without making it code your entire game, of course, because it wouldn't even have the ability to do to do that it would it would like make some really weird decisions but asking it to code or explain certain things for you is really good kind of using it as like a tutor like you can think of it as a tutor who is a little bit has a few little mistakes here and there but um it's a it's a great resource also i would recommend getting into some discord groups or some reddit groups um, to really join a community uh, game development is what it is today because of the community aspect of it. It's a really difficult industry to get into because it's so sought after, because it's so amazing and fun, and because everyone is so passionate about games. Everyone who is in game development is in game development because they love video games. So these Reddit groups and these Discord groups and whatever communities online or in person are just so supportive a lot of the times, especially the wholesome ones, the mostly feminine LGBT run ones, so wholesome, so um, supportive, um, great suggestions. You can make really great friends just that way. I recommend going on Twitch and watching some video games that you like um, on Twitch, like Stardew or Animal Crossing or whatever, if you're into cozy games. And a lot of the time these Twitch streamers have Discord groups. So joining that, that's a way I met quite a few people in the cozy gaming sphere. Also, there's um, really great co-working streams. So if you want to be kind of in an online community while still working and learning on your own, I recommend joining Cozy Coworking Stream. So there's one that Threads and Thistles inventory, um, Alyssa there, she has one um, that she does, I think like every weekday, and it's really great, it's a really fun time. So I recommend that. 
Now let's talk about the in-person resources, the things that you can physically do in person with other people. So the number one thing that you should do if you want to get into game development and you're lucky enough to have one of these in your city or your area is to do a game jam. You can totally do this online as well. There's um, a game jam. There's a game jam board that shows you all of the game jams at any given time of the year and you can always participate that and they don't require that you come with your own team. So what a game jam is, is that you have typically it's 48 hours, but it can be it can be one day if you're crazy enough. It can be a week. It can be two weeks. Typically, it's 48 hours. The ones that I participated in have always been 48 hours where you're given a prompt and you have to make a video game in that time frame, an entire video game, an entire book playable build. Very, very short typically, but based on the prompt, you have to do that. And you can actually, um, so you don't have to come with the team. You can, or you can come with a few people, but then you network with the other people that don't have teams there and you become friends with them. And um, you have mentors typically, and there's always prizes at the end of the game jam. So depending on who does the best, most accurate to the, to the theme, wins a prize. And it's a great thing to put on your resume if you're looking to get into the industry. And it's a great like learning place because you're in a time crunch, have to make a game with these other people. So you can make so many friends this way. And um, that's great in general for any type of game development. But if you find like other people that are similar to you and you do a cozy game, my gosh, I can just imagine how well that would go for you. It would be really fun. Us at Cozy Cat Games, we're really lucky to be based in Montreal, Canada. Montreal is actually a huge hub for video games and indie games and like just creativity in general, but especially for uh, the game industry. So um, we are having like a lot of like things that we do in person, but no matter what city you're in, if you're in a major city or like at least a city that has like a major university or something like that, there should be plenty of in-person events um, for you to attend to because the game development community is present pretty much in every corner of the world at this point. A big thing that you can do, this one, I say it with a grain of salt because I know how some of the clubs are. Um, so you could join a school club. Um, there's a lot of gaming school clubs, but I know that sometimes they are really filled with like guys for the most part and it's like a very specific demographic. So it can be really difficult to get into these kind of spaces and build a community if you're a woman. Um, but I mean, there's always a chance. Otherwise, if it's not a gaming club, I recommend getting into like an art club or like an anime club or something like that. If you have that, I feel like in those types of like niche hobby spheres, even like a book club, um, they could have people who are interested in gaming. So that's one way that you can connect and, um, maybe have some like gaming workshops or something like that. Another great resource is if you're in school, um, be it high school or university, join a coding class. Um, even if you're into art, um, I would recommend because knowing how to code, knowing at least the basics of coding really, really helps with game development. So even if you're just learning Python rather than usually use C sharp or C++, um, even if you're just learning like a different coding language or you're learning how to make a website, all of these skills are transferable to a, to a certain extent and it kind of gets your brain working in a different way than just the artistic way or the music way or whatever. So, or the writing way, whatever, all the different aspects. So, um, yeah, I would recommend, um, joining any classes and actually even if it just says that it's an intro to programming class a lot of programming classes have video games as like projects like you it's like an intro to coding class but like the final project will be like a creative project and you have to you can make a game as one of the options so there's a lot of options there because making a game is a really great way to implement all the different aspects of programming so a lot of teachers tend to do that um, and this is a little thing that I don't know how common it is, but it is common in Montreal where we're based. It's a video game program, a video game program. So the way that me and the other girls at Cozy Hat Games met each other is we were enrolled in the same program. It's a video game design program that we've been taking for like two years now. And yeah, we are all interested in Cozy Games. We're all girls. Um, and we met in this program and we decided as our final project, we had to make our very own video game and we decided we wanted to, you know, take it the extra mile and really open our own studio and make a game for commercial use and use all the resources available in this program to do so. So if you're lucky enough to live in a city that has a game development hub and sphere, you're probably going to have these programs that are either government funded 
or like you know maybe you have to pay for them sometimes but ours personally was really heavily government funded so super accessible and um a lot of the times like different go governments like want to promote uh, creativity and um, innovation and all of that in their country in their province or territory or state um so they will be like different scholarships or grants or whatever or it won't be like ridiculously expensive so um yeah i recommend looking into that see if there's any in your local area and to enroll in those even if it is like kind of with time like for me i i I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of an overachiever, but I do university and I did this program just because I love game development so much that I wanted to do everything I could. So you don't have to take it that far and be enrolled at two schools at once. But if you have a job or something like that, don't make the excuse of stopping to learn just because you already have that commitment. Really see if you can push yourself to go that extra mile and learn something that's going to fulfill you creatively and maybe bring you a career that you'll love. So yeah, look into that. So now let's talk about what it takes to build your very own game. With Cozy Games, I think a big thing that separates our community from other communities and subgenres and niches in gaming is that we have community, is that we are so supportive and we're not so much focused on individualism, it's more on the collective a little bit. Um, I mean, that's what I've noticed, it's really about supporting each other and like that. So. I would recommend, especially if you're into cozy gaming, to not really do a solo project, especially like early on in your career, because the thing with solo projects is that it's great, it's great for your resume. It looks great. Um, and if you can actually follow through with it, amazing and props to you, it's difficult. But I think that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, go with the team. Cozy Cat Games and Madame Fifi's Bakery would not be what it is if it were not for my girls and if it were not for our community and our support for each other. Having a team means that you can allocate your resources differently and use everyone's strengths and you have a sounding board to, um, to listen to other ideas, see if your ideas are maybe not so good because otherwise you're kind of talking into an echo chamber sometimes and it can be tough to see what's going well and what's not going so well. Personally, I've tried to make a lot of solo projects and I have, um, you know, also our artist um, has made webtoons and she's done very, very successful in certain webtoons. And, um, but she said like, even, and for me personally, whenever I work on my solo project, it's like you have this success, but if you take a break, there's nothing holding you accountable to come back. And then you're on permanent hiatus. I feel like that happens a lot to webtooners, right? They're on hiatus permanently because they're a team of themselves. Like they're the only person they're relying on. But if you have other people relying on you and other people holding you up and pushing you forward, it's so much more validating and so much more fulfilling. And you have someone to celebrate your wins with. It's so like amazing for us to hit a milestone or a goal or do something correctly. And then we can high five each other. We did it. We did a good job together. I think that's a really special thing that exists, especially in the cozy gaming sphere. So I would recommend making friends using the previous tips in this video and going with these friends forward to really make a game with other people and have something to celebrate together. It's gonna to be so much more fun in the long term, I promise you. Another tip is don't go with your biggest idea first. Everyone tends to like have this like glorious idea and that's why they wanted to get into game development. They're like, I wanna make this one game, it's missing in the market, it's gonna be perfect. Don't make that game first. Take that game, put it in your back pocket and keep it for next month or next year. Start with the game that you think would be easy to make, but something like in your within your reach and something that is like fun and engaging, similar maybe to the game that you want to make. But if you start with that one game, you're gonna be stuck as soon as you can't do something because you're gonna feel like you have to do it justice and you don't have all the resources yet available to do that, right? So don't start with your biggest idea. Going along those same lines, something that one of our teachers used to say all the time was to kill your babies. Yes, I know, sounds dark. <laughs> kill your babies. Your ideas are your babies. Your game development ideas are your babies and sometimes they just don't work and you gotta, you gotta just commit some murder there, you know? I'm sorry, like, <laughs> can't tell you anything else. You gotta just be able to move on to the next idea because ideas are cheap. Ideas are 
super cheap. You can come up with ideas like this, like this, like this. Super easy. You should do an exercise. We had we had to do this exercise in our first semester where you have a paper. And I think you sep separate it into like 10 boxes and y you're given 10 minutes or I think five minutes. And every 30 seconds, you have to write a new game idea down. And then you see how many ideas you can really come up with in five minutes. Ideas are so cheap, so don't sit on just one idea and try to make it work. If it doesn't work, scrap it, move on to the next. Your real, your real value comes from your ability to generate ideas, not the idea itself. Understand the difference there. And another big thing, something that happens a lot to gamers, I don't think cozy gamers experience this as much, but just like general, like, you know, typical gamer stereotype, like nerdy, you know, awkward, not able to socialize. These types of words come to mind when we think of a gamer, right? So let's try to break that stereotype. I think we do that a lot with cozy games. I don't identify as someone that's awkward, but I consider myself a super like nerdy because I love nerdy things. <laughs> I'm a total nerd, but I don't think that that has a negative connotation in my eyes. So anyways, this is super important to break that kind of stereotype because especially as women, we're more social where we tend to be a little bit more like extroverted or like able to communicate more emotionally available than a lot of guys. Get used to talking about your game, talking about your studio, talking about your ideas and get used to pitching your ideas because that's going to be super important going forward, especially if you start to make your game and actually sell it and like try to get funding for it. You're going to have to talk to publishers. You're going to have to network. You're going to have to like communicate with people. So learning these skills and not being shy, not underselling yourself. I'm looking at you. Don't undersell yourself. That's something that women do. Don't do that. People, women, especially myself and my teammates, sometimes we're like, oh yeah, we like made this thing. But like, it's actually so amazing. And we're like hiding how much it is amazing because we're like afraid to like be boastful or something like that. So there's a balance to be made and try to figure out what that balance is for you. So that's all the tips that I have for you guys today. I hope that this was super helpful and that you can really start to get into game development if that's something that feels like it's calling to you. I think that this cozy gaming niche has is just like the best thing that could have happened to gaming culture because it opens the door for women and femininity and LGBT to be normal and really, really like a main center and a main thing in game development. And, you know, big companies are starting to realize that and we're going to get games that are more catered to our needs. Um, instead of just playing games like Red, Dem Red Dead Redemption because that's the best horse simulator game that's out there because we haven't had like games that are like, you know, targeted towards us. So we take games that are like made for the target gamer demographic and we make it our own. So now we're actually becoming the center stage and people are realizing, oh, okay, so girls actually do play games. Oh, who would have thought? So, um... Again, if you're an artist, please send us your character customer drawing that you think would be a great addition to Madame Fifi's Bakery. Next Tuesday, we're going live as a team. And I hope that you guys got some value from this. Let me know what other kind of videos you want to see in the description because I am running a blank. <laughs> I want to help you guys. I want to give you guys advice or give you suggestions, but I don't know what you need or what you want to see. So please suggest something in the comment, in the comments. And I hope you have a lovely day. Um, enjoy the sun, enjoy the spring, and I'll see you in the next one.